Welcome back to CPAC 2018. This is The Daily Signal. I'm your editor-in-chief, Rob Bluey. We're joined now by Eric Bolle and... Hi, I'm Jenny Malsabano, a contributor with The Daily Signal. Eric, you just spoke at CPAC um, about the, the tragic death of your son. Um, you called yourself the accidental expert. Tell us about the cause that you've adopted now in the wake of this. Yeah, I, it adopted me, unfortunately. Um, September 8th of this of 17, I, I was driving home from dinner with my wife, and she was driving, and I got that phone call. The phone, my cell phone rang. There was a, a young man who was in a panic. He said, Mr. Bowling, call Kayla right now. Kayla was a girl that he was kind of seeing a little bit. Eric Chase was a, a great kid. He, was a, he had a phenomenal freshman year at University of Colorado. He was one week into his sophomore year. Great grades the first year. Really close. My only child, my only son. Anyway, so Kayla... I ring Kayla, she picks up the phone and she's crying and I simply said, is he alive? I don't know, my mind just went there. You know, that phone call at 10.30, 11 o'clock at night. Uh, and she said no. And my life changed from that moment forward. My wife spilled out onto the roadway. I picked her up, we sat on the curb and we just fell into this deep, deep, dark place. Uh, never thought we would be there. Never th saw this coming. And so for the six months since that's happened, um, I talked about it on Twitter right away, and people said, you know, I really am concerned about a family member as well. I'm worried about my son or my daughter or my cousin or my brother or my sister or my mom. And they came to the Twitter account to, to, to have this discussion. I've literally had two or 300,000 people join my Twitter account to talk about this, to, to, to create awareness for each other. Quick story, uh, about a week ago, a guy comes on my Twitter account, and he's up, he, he needs opioids for pain relief, and he says on the Twitter, he said, I appreciate what you're doing, but I wish I didn't wake up today. I hope I don't wake up tomorrow. I don't want to live anymore. And I said immediately, I retweeted, I said, hold on, stay with us. Let's talk. Let's have a conversation. And he got two or 300 responses from other people giving him advice, giving him go see, go try this or go see this person here. Or let's talk. Let's be friends. And it, it, I think what this is doing, some really strange way, is a calling for me. Um, I think it's going to be saving lives so that other parents don't have to go through, frankly, what my wife and I are going through. Eric, something that you just said on stage, that President Trump personally called you on yeah. Thanksgiving. What did that phone call mean to you, and how do you think his administration has done so far in tackling this epidemic? Yeah, great question. Um, so the, the proverbial empty chair was happening. I was walking over to the table. Turkey's on the table. I know it's going to be a disaster. It's going to be just we're going to all break down. And the phone rings, my phone, and I've known President Trump since... 2005, long time. Um, but he had something different in his voice this time. He said, Eric, I just want you to know we're thinking about you. This is the first holiday without your son. We know how hard that can be. And I realized he had empathy and compassion for this issue. I don't, I'm not claiming anything else right now, but just for this issue. And so I basically said, you know, you really saved us from a really, really tough day. But more importantly, can I come and talk to you about it? And he said, sure, next time you're in D.C., you know, let's come to the, to the Oval Office. And, and I've been there several times in the six months. I've been there four or five times in six months. I've spoken to him personally and Kellyanne Conway and uh, Mercedes Schlapp who are involved in the opioid awareness as well. Um, it's not the biggest issue on Americans' minds right now, but for me it is. And I think there has, needs to be more done. I think he's doing a great job, but there needs to be a lot more awareness created around not only the, the, the supply side of opioids, the, the farm, big farmers pushing pills on, on the market. They're pushing them out there. They far more than are needed. Or um, illegal drugs. My son died from an illegal Xanax that was laced with fentanyl. The illegal drugs that are coming up through the southern border and the northern border from Canada as well. That's the, the supply side. I think they're really in tune to that. What they need to also do is expand the, the, the demand side, the side that says, let's get more information out to young people. People as young as 10, 11, and 12 years old are now experimenting with, with opioids that can kill them. We need, to get, we need to get on top of that, and parents certainly need to start talking to their kids. Not my kid syndrome is going to be, it's going to be, deadly. Well, let, going to be let, deadly. Let's talk about that, because you, you shared that from the stage, um, that there are parents who think that it would never happen to their families. Yep. Why do they need to be aware? You know, there's a good story, uh, not a good story, a bad story, but a story r related to that. First of all, my son died on September 8th. I, I'm, I'm a, I was a Fox host. I was a you know, high-profile person. He died. It can happen to anyone's kid. I, I, I can't tell you how many discussions we've had about that. The very next day, there was a, I believe it was a Navy officer, former Navy officer, whose 19-year-old son also died in Denver 
he, Eric was in Boulder. He was in Denver. Could have been the same bad batch of, of um, street Xanaxes. They think it could have been. Um, people need to realize that it, any kid can do it. There, there was a kid. A story in the Daily Mail, I think, the day before yesterday, about a 19-year-old Columbia University scholar whose parents saw a change over a course of maybe four or five weeks, and he was dead the next day. I mean, it just there's a. I can't tell you how many kids high school quarterbacks who maybe had an injury, who started using an opioid, was prescribed an opioid to, for pain relief of an injury, who ended up be getting hooked on the opioid. And uh, star athletes, A students, um, just beautiful. If you're under 50 years old in America, you're most likely to die from opioid overdose than, than any other way of dying accidentally. More than car accidents, gun accidents, than anything. And that's, that's awful. Parents need to be aware of that. That's an incredible statistic that I did not realize. And on that note, you've opened up a really important dialogue. What else can we do as a society to keep contributing to this discussion? I think you're doing it right now. I mean, I just walked, you know, I've been doing radio interviews on this. And five years ago, probably I, there would be no interest in my story. But now I think people are realizing with 64,000 people a year, last year dying, that's 175 a day. I think the spike in the number of deaths is also creating awareness. But but, but I think society is more open to um, talking about it. In other words, Eric Bowling and Adrian Bowling's son died of an opioid overdose, and they're talking about it. That means everyone should talk about it. There's no, there's no embarrassment to talking about this. There's no, there's no, uh, you know, scarlet A that that should be on a chest of a parent who says, "I talked to my kid about it." He says, "Your kid has something going on. You may want to talk to yours too." It's okay. You'll save a life. I'll tell one quick story. I, I saw Eric, my son, um, Father's Day, which is in June. He passed in September, so a few weeks prior to his passing. I was in Denver. We had a dad-son weekend, phenomenal weekend, and we had the discussion again about harder drugs. He said, Dad, I got this. Dad, I got this. He didn't. He had it until he didn't have it. You know, so the, 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 the discussion has to be from the per parents' level. The White House is going to do some things, and, and just by you having me on your show and other shows, it's going to save lives. You, you talked about how you interacted on Twitter and social media with those who might be struggling. What are the resources and where do you, where would you, if somebody's watching yeah. right now, where do you tell I have them to, be, to go? I go to my Twitter. I, mean, I want to be very specific and careful about this. I don't, I'm not with any association or any group or any website or even the White House. I think you come to my, my Twitter account at, at Eric Bowling on Twitter and just add or take. If you need some advice, take. If you have some advice, add it. I don't want to sign up with anyone. Because that, that's not what I'm here. I'm here to create awareness, not to drive people to a certain direction. Just, just let's all be smart about this and let's save some lives. Well, thank you so much for being with us today. We're keeping you and your family in our thoughts and prayers. That, that's all I can ask for. Thank you very much. Thank you, Eric. Good to meet you guys. Thank you. We'll be back with more interviews from The Daily Signal.